Okay, we've made it to the final step, not including bonus, of course, the final step of our week four, uh, and our, our not only week four, but our, our project as a whole. So we, we can really start to celebrate now because we're really, the finish line is right there. So what we gotta do for this last step is open up our spawner script, and we're gonna be filling out our start and update methods inside this script. So in start, what we wanna say is particle is equal to get component in children and we're going to say particle system and that's going to give us access to that that fire particle that we we added to our our little campfire there we're also going to say time to spawn is equal to spawn delay this is just to make sure that our time to spawn will always start out with a value and we're also going to say particle dot play and that's to ensure that our particle will play when our spawner uh, or when the game starts because we have play on awake on but we want to be extra sure that this plays because that particle effect is what's going to inform the player that a specific island has a spawner they're going to be able to see that smoke from way in the distance so that's it for our start method we're going to drop down into update now where the meat of our code is going to lie and what we're going to say is if can spawn so if that that variable that we set true in on trigger is true we're going to say if time to spawn is less than or equal to zero as in we our time to spawn counter has hit zero um, we're going to say if uh, total gold minus gold per npc is greater than or equal to zero so if we have enough gold left in our spawner to give to an enemy, then we want to spawn an enemy. So what we're gonna say is game object, oops, capital G game object, GO is equal to instantiate game object. And then in our parentheses, we'll say NPC. So that's gonna instantiate that NPC prefab that we add. We're gonna say GO.transform.position is equal to spawn positions random dot range zero comma spawn positions dot length and what that's going to do is oh, we want to add a dot position here too what that's going to do is give or, or spawn our npc and then place them at any given point uh or at any spot along our um, or at any of the four spots that we give them. Um, we also want to go ahead and say uh, game object dot get component enemy inventory and then add our parentheses dot current gold equals gold per NPC. So now we're, we're adding that gold in. And then what we need to do in the next step is say game object dot get component nav mesh agent and our open and close parentheses dot enabled equals true. And right now we're getting a red underline because it's kind of like our UI, we actually need to add an include at the top of our script to get access to the nav mesh agent class. So at the top, we're gonna hit enter and say using unity engine dot AI instead of UI, and that's gonna give us access to the nav mesh agent. And the reason for that is we need a version of our NPC prefab that's nav mesh agent is disabled because otherwise spawning in these game objects is going to cause some errors for us. Finally, outside of, or after that line, we need to say total gold is minus equals to, that's, that's the same as saying total gold equals total gold minus a number. So total gold minus equals gold per NPC. So we're subtracting that gold value from our total gold. And then finally, we're gonna say time to spawn is equal to spawn delay. So now we've got our enemy spawning, we've reset our timer, and we subtract gold from our total gold, so that's perfect. Um, what we wanna say here, outside of our conditional for the gold, we want to have an else statement, so we'll say else in the brackets, and we're gonna particle.stop. And what that means is that when the, the spawner runs out of its gold, it's actually going to stop the particle system, which will signal to the player that the spawner is done spawning enemies. Then what we want to do is step outside of our time to spawn conditional and add another else statement. And in this one, we're going to write time to spawn is minus equal to time dot delta time. 
And that's going to make it so if it's not time to spawn, we're going to count, we're going to remove uh, the value of time that passed between one frame of update, we're going to remove that from time to spawn, meaning this is going to essentially count down until it hits zero, and then it'll spawn everything and reset itself. Um, great, so with all that in, in our script here, we can save, and our, our spawner is now ready to spawn things, but we have to assign a couple values in the inspector before we can, before we can do that. Uh, the first thing we need to do is go back to our assets folder, go to tech ability and NPCs, and we're gonna make a duplicate of both of our prefabs here. And I'm actually gonna collapse some of these values just to be safe. We're gonna duplicate both TA Dungeon Skeleton and rename it as Spawner Dungeon Skeleton. And same thing with our TA Skeleton, we're gonna duplicate that and rename it to spawner underscore skeleton. And the reason we do that is we need versions of our prefabs that have the nav mesh agent disabled. So we're gonna disable the nav mesh agent on both of those guys there. And then what we're gonna do is find our spawner object. We're going to pick which NPC we want to be spawned by the spawner. I'm gonna say the dungeon skeleton. And then we need to open up our spawn positions variable by just clicking it here and changing the size to four. And we're gonna drag in each of these spawn positions. There we go. And now our spawner is set up. And what I'm going to do is collapse my spawner here and duplicate it as well. And on the duplicate version, the one that says spawner one, I'm going to drag in my spawner skeleton. So now I've got a spawner with my skeleton and with my dungeon skeleton. And I'm actually going to rename the one with my dungeon skeleton to DS underscore spawner. And I'm going to rename this one to SK underscore spawner. So now I have a spawner, that SK spawner spawns skeletons and DS spawner spawns dungeon skeletons. Um, the final thing we need to do is go back to our tech ability folder and we wanna just make prefabs of, uh, of our two spawners here. So inside the tech ability folder, you can just drag and drop those prefabs and this pop-up will come up. You're gonna wanna hit original prefab. That's gonna make a new prefab instead of updating the old one. It's gonna make a new one that holds information about our dungeon skeleton. We're gonna do the same thing with SK spawner. We're gonna drag that and hit uh, S or original prefab. And now we've got two prefabs that we can place and, and move around anywhere we want. So you can now go crazy placing these spawners. Um, remember that they are gonna give uh, gold to each thing. So maybe you know you wanna rethink how you've got some of these placed. Like I've got all these guys guarding a treasure chest in here. So maybe I'll, I'll delete them and replace them with a spawner. Um, this is kind of the last opportunity for you to kind of place objects around the game and make them your own. So go ahead and do that because you with this spawner you've now completed the pirates game and you have a fully playable start to finish experience um, where you're sailing the seas and you're getting gold and you're fighting bad guys so uh, thanks so much for coming um, feel free to check out the last bonus step um, otherwise we hope to see you again next month where we'll be reusing a lot of this stuff and making an entirely new project